These are the key stats of Dojo 1.0. We had 73,000 points of rating gain across the dojo. 41 points average gain per person in the dojo. And per task completed, we had an average rating gain of 4.3 points. Much more than we might have expected. Now, if you don't know anything about the dojo, it was built on three very simple principles. One, you need to play longer games and analyze those games. Two, you need a structure to hold yourself accountable to that you understand. And number three was a principle of plus minus. Someone above you to whom you give a certain measure of authority and someone below you to whom you have to explain yourself in the clearest possible words. Now, the challenge with 1.0 was truly that with any new site, there's like some stuff that people have to learn. The early adopters, they're a different breed of person. They're willing to learn new things. They're capable of dealing with friction. I am not one of those people. And I think people of my generation as well, a little older than Gen X people, we feel something like uh, discord and we're just like, I'm probably gonna get arrested if I go in there, you know? So a lot of people like me who were not willing to join the site. And I wanna say, if I hadn't been part of the site, I don't think I would have joined that first year either. It would have just been too hard. We had to learn how to use Discord, how to use uh, the Google Doc we were using. You know, there was a bunch of other stuff that was a little complicated, right? Wasn't that user friendly? And so that's really what we are aiming for. One of the key goals we had for Dojo 2.0 was to make it a much more user friendly interface, a little bit more fun and engaging of an interface as well. And I'm happy to say, We've done really well with that. And really, it was one of our early adopters, Jack Stengline, who really helped build this site. He was the guy, really, who took out, you know, he had a couple ideas at first of how we could schedule sparring and meetings, and he built it into this amazing site that I'm going to show you now. So, I'm hoping that the people who are like me, of my ilk, who maybe saw some of the site and were just like, it's too complicated, are gonna come back. As you can see, the first thing you land on is your profile. This is my profile here. It's a little description of myself. You can see the ratings, the progress, the activity, and I can see some games that I've uploaded. Okay, beautiful. Then we're gonna talk about the scoreboard. We have a games viewer, so you can see games across the dojo that have been submitted with the annotations. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. And then we have this calendar. I'm gonna show a little bit about that. And then here you can set up some meetings and here we talk about our recent graduates. Okay, but let me start here with activity just to show, this is my own, I'm gonna show a couple of these activity breakdowns. Before, it was not that enjoyable for me, and so I'm sure it wasn't that enjoyable for others to log the scores, right? And so one of the key things we've done is we've created the cohort score. And this way you can measure yourself not only by your rating, but how much improvement you've done. And it's really beautiful. Let's just take a look. I can click any of these boxes. Here's the categories. We have five categories, games analysis, tactics, middle games, and games opening, right? And I can click any of these and see my breakdown. I'll just click games and analysis, for example, right? I have annotated games, games played, postmortems, and then reviewing with somebody higher. I have a coach to whom I show a lot of my annotations, and then review with lower. I do a lot of game review, especially when our weekly graduation show, I always look at some games that have been played across the cohort, people who have graduated from one cohort to the next. And then it's really fun, you go to time breakdown, and then let's say I click that games and analysis, boom. Well, what's interesting here is, first of all, I can see that I've spent more time annotating the games. Oh, and I knew that about myself too. I spent a lot of time annotating the games, much more than I do actually playing the games, right? Here's I'm reviewing with the, the people below me and then reviewing with above and the postmortems, right? That's the time spent. And so we go back and you get a, just a beautiful sense of how you're studying. And then, you know, our site is always improving. And one thing we're definitely going to do is be a little bit more direct about how exactly people should be using their time if that's something they want. And I certainly want that too because I never had a graphic representation of the time spent and then also 
the kind of categories, you know, the, the food pyramid of the stuff I was doing to improve my own gains. And then here to the left, you can see uh, I've got all these things that I've been doing recently. And we just started this, so this is going to evolve not only for myself, but other people in terms of getting a really more interesting breakdown of the different categories that people use. Okay, let me show you somebody else, give you a sense. First of all, this is the cohort of the 12 to 1300 group. We have over 100 members in here. People are just shifting over all of their data now. And um, here you see the dojo score. So you can see your ranking among your peers in terms of that, your rating change, of course, right? And then if we scroll, we can see the different kinds of things they've done, right? Beautiful, all the way over. I'm gonna click on Sam. She said I could do this. We just played a tournament together, Maryland Open. She is an example of somebody I feel we have many in the program. I call them the pandemic players, people who just started playing and she's really going for it, studying a lot. And um, here you can see her breakdown, right? And it's different for different people. Right? Her time breakdown, I don't think she's really even started doing that, but you can see it's a little bit different with the games and analysis right? being not as much yet. But let's just click on, let's say, middle games and strategy. Well, there it is. Logical chess move by move, most instructive games, and middle game sparring. Fantastic. Really great. I love it. Also, another cool thing about Sam, she has graduated. So we have a little graduation belt and actually, if we go to activity, one of the cool things you can see here is that she graduated from 1100, 1200. And when she graduated, that was her total dojo score. So it gives you and others a sense of, oh, well, that's the kind of points that I need to make it to the next cohort. I really enjoy this site. Let's just show a couple other things here. If we go to the games viewer and I click on any cohort, I can search and boom, I get all the games in that cohort. And then let's say I click one, boom, I get in this beautiful interface uh, where I can see the person's annotations. I'm gonna talk more about our annotations in a second. Then also let's take a look at the calendar, boom. I go over here, let's hit today. Here we can see the list of things that are available. Let's say I just click on anybody here it will tell me what they're looking for and which cohorts they are interested in doing it in. Let's click another one. Uh, these are different things they're looking to do. These are the cohorts they're willing to do it with, right? Beautiful. And this is one of the things really uh, that we asked Jack at the beginning. Could you design something like this? The first thing we're looking for in the site because we need people to organize times where they can meet to do the sparring in the program in addition to like meeting to talk about books, you know, meeting to go over each other's games. This is where you can schedule a meeting. And then here in recent, you can see our recent graduates and the featured games, right? Beautiful. And every Monday, I go over, at 1.30 Eastern, I go over the games of the people who have recently, who have graduated in that week. Couple thoughts now, I wanna describe how our thinking about the dojo training program evolved in the year, and then what kind of changes we instituted. Really hundreds of things, a lot of small details that we've realized, but I'm just gonna pick out a couple. The first is, I've been teaching for a long time. And I knew from primarily my own experience, but also that of other GMs, that the way to improve is to go over your games. My students, though, were pretty poor at going over their games, and I was having a hard time really getting them to drill down in their annotations. And then the amazing thing with the dojo training program was it really confirmed this thing Botvinnik said well over 50 years ago, which is that you need to publish your analysis, right? And it's this amazing thing that's happened where by people, and this has gone across the cohort, whether you're in the zero to 300 cohort or in the 1900 cohort, if you write out your thoughts with an idea that, oh, someone's gonna read this, your thoughts are just gonna be much clearer. And we see just amazing annotations across the dojo. So one of the key changes we're making is to say, you need to go over five of the annotations from your cohort. 
right? So instead of showing you some GM annotation, no, you need to be looking at the annotations of people in your cohort because you can see they have the same problems and, you know, difficulties in growing their game as you do. And you can see what a good annotation in your cohort looks like. That's been, I want to say, as a coach, the most beautiful thing about the dojo that we have this amazing database and that I can see people growing from this experience, right? And with that, honestly, with going over your own games, really means that you have to play a longer chess. Because really, you know, to look at a game, to spend some time on it, you need to be thinking while you're playing it. Right? And that system two thinking that goes into the games is really, I think, what's led to this amazing stat of 41 points per player average across the dojo. Another thing that was very enjoyable for me was I got to review basically all the books in the program. I tried to read as many, read or reread as many in the program as I could. If you want our YouTube channel full of these book reviews that I did for each of these books. And that helped me, Kosti and David, really drill down on which books belong where. And there were a couple new books that just came out. We added those to the program. We also did this amazing thing where we really drilled down on what we thought were the best games. You can see that on our podcast. We did three parts talking about what we felt were the best games of all time across different time periods. And we really wanted the games to memorize to be games that were very special. So we had a big debate about that and we changed that up some too. Now, the other thing I wanna say that I felt was very big in terms of what we learned, right? was at the beginning of the dojo, I have to admit, we were ignorant about just people really beginning. Like I've taught a lot of beginners, but not in this new pandemic world where people are learning online. And for example, I didn't know that the average chess.com user was rated 775, right? And I didn't really understand what a lot of their um, grief was and how it was hard for them to develop so for example, at the beginning of the dojo, we had a whole cohort that was zero to 600. And now we've really drilled it down and say, no, 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 no. We have to get realize that it's much harder than that to progress. So our first cohort is zero to 300 now. That's one of the changes that we've instituted. So it goes zero to 300, four to five, five to six, and on up. Because if we've split it from four to 600, it was too long of a jump, right? And we want to be really clear about that there's really a difference actually between four to five and five to six. And that's something that we learned, right, by going over people's games in those cohorts, talking to them, hearing their feedback. And so another thing that we changed in the lower cohorts is we instituted this thing we're calling the blunder games, where originally we were being real jerks. We're like, you guys need to understand that you need to play, you know, um, longer games, it might even sound patriarchal or something, I don't know. In any case, what we realized is that in the lower cohorts, especially under 1,000, that people need to be able to play a lot of reps, a lot of quicker games, let's say 15 minute, where you're just focusing on not hanging your stuff. That's it, that's it. So that's another big change that we've introduced into the program, is the idea that the lower cohorts have different needs than the higher cohorts and they can play faster chess, right? As you go up, right, you're just gonna concentrate on uh, longer chess. And I'm smiling because I just remembered one of the things that we're instituting now in that time breakdown is we're gonna let you do, you know, the stuff that we do not approve. We can log it. You don't get any dojo score for it, but you can log it such as blitz and all this other stuff that you can log that time that you've done other things. Some of which, right, like uh, let's say watching World Championship uh, commentary, I get a lot out of that. I enjoy it, right? But it's not, it's, it's not sweat work, right? Which is the basis of the program. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you join us in Dojo 2.0. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful website. I'm really happy with it. And we will continue to improve, dial down all the things about improvement. We're always looking too at other books and resources and how those can be used. We're working some with Chessable now. So all of that is gonna to continue to improve moving forward, but the main thing that I'm so happy about is we have a user-friendly interface that I know that me, who is somebody who's not an early adopter, could use and have some joy in it. All right, bye-bye.